Hey guys, we are going to solve this rational inequality. I'm gonna give you some pretty specific steps to follow. And as we're doing it, you might be like, okay, I can do those steps, but I don't really get why that's giving me the answer. Well, don't worry, because at the end, I'm gonna show you why it worked and it's so cool. It'll hopefully make everything clear of all the steps we did. So the first thing I wanna do is get all my variables and numbers and everything on one side and zero on the other side. So guess what, we're good. All right, from there, I wanna factor anything that can factor. I will stick a video in the corner that's a factoring review, but I'm just gonna tell you right now that this factors to x minus four times x plus three on top and x plus three times x minus two on bottom. And we're still greater than zero. From here, you might notice, oh, hey, those x plus threes are going to cancel. We do want to notice that absolutely, but we still need to take them into account for this next part. So keep in mind they're going to cancel, but also we do still need to take them into account. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to set each of these equal to zero. So I'm going to have x minus four equals zero x plus three equals zero. And there are two of those, right? I don't need to write them twice. And then x minus two equals zero. The fact that there are two of them will affect my graph, but I don't need to worry about that quite yet. All right, then I'm gonna solve each of these for x. So this one I would add four to both sides, get x equals four, subtract three from both sides, get x equals negative three, and add two to both sides to get x equals two. The next thing I'm going to do is make a number line because I know you love number lines and you were hoping you'd get to make a number line today. I want to represent each of these numbers on my number line. So we'd have negative three approximately here, two and four. Your, sta oh, your spacing doesn't have to be perfect but it's just to give us a good representation. Okay, I want to represent each of these with a circle. I need to know if it's an open circle or a closed circle. So I know right off that two and negative three are going to be open circles. Why? Because if I were to plug in two for x here, it would make my denominator zero, which is a giant no-no in math. Same thing for negative three. If I were to plug it in, it would make my denominator zero. So those get open circles. And that is one of the reasons why, even though these would cancel, I still need to recognize the fact that it would cause a zero in the denominator before they cancel. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, to know if four is an open or closed circle, I'm gonna look at my sign. Because it's greater than, it's going to be an open circle. The thing that would make it a closed circle would be if this were greater than or equal to, but it's not. So it's going to be an open circle. Okay, next we're going to do something that is very exciting called sign analysis. Tell your friends. So I want to figure out for each of these regions, I have four, one, two, three, four, when I plug a number in from that region for x, is my output positive or negative? The cool thing about sign analysis is I don't really care what my exact number answer is. I only care if it's positive or negative. And let me show you what that looks like. So if I pick a number left of negative three or less than negative three, let's just pick negative 10. I'm going to plug it in but only worry about if my answer is positive or negative. Now, remember how we noticed these would cancel. We already accounted for it here, so now we can have them cancel and just plug in my negative 10 to the x minus four over x minus two. So we already know that that would create a hole in our graph. We've figured that out. So now we can just focus on it being x minus four over x minus two is greater than zero. All right, so let's go ahead and plug in negative 10. If I have negative 10 minus four, that gives me a negative on top. Negative 10 minus two would give me a negative on bottom. Negative divided by negative is positive. 
All right, so there is my positive region to the left of negative three. Now we're gonna plug in a number between negative three and two. Let's pick zero, zero's in there. So if I had zero minus four, that would give me a negative on top. Zero minus two would give me a negative on bottom. Negative divided by negative is positive. Now, if you've been doing these problems before, oftentimes these alternate positive, negative, positive, negative, but that is not always the case. And this is a great example where that's not the case. We have two positives in a row. All right, let's pick a number between two and four. Let's pick three. When I plug in three, I get three minus four, which would be negative over three minus two, which would be positive. And a positive, sorry, a negative divided by positive is negative. All right. Now I need a number bigger than four. Let's just pick 10. Oh, I wrote four. <laughs> number bigger than four. Four is not bigger than four. We're picking 10. <laughs> so if I plug in 10, I get 10 minus four. That's positive. Over 10 minus two, that's positive. And a positive divided by a positive is positive. Woohoo! Okay. But now what are we doing with all these pluses and minuses? Like, great, that was fun. Now what? Well, we're gonna look back at our original problem. Remember, I was wondering, where is this greater than zero? Well, what types of numbers are greater than zero? Positive numbers, right? So I'm go I already figured out where positive numbers would be in this scenario. They are to the left of negative three, between negative three and two, and larger than four. Remember, this is where when I pick a number here, like negative 10, I plugged it in, my output was positive, okay? So those are those regions. Again, if you're like, I don't know what this lady is talking about, stick around. So this is my answer. If I pick a number in this region, this region, or this region, that's a lot of numbers. I really can only not pick numbers in here and where my open circles are. Any of those other numbers, if I plug it in for X, I will get a number that is greater than zero. It'll make this statement true. But let's go ahead and show that answer using inequalities and then with interval notation. So first I wanna represent this. So I would say for that, that X is less than negative three. That would represent that section, right? Or, X can also be greater than negative three and less than two, right? X can be greater than negative three and less than two. That's one way to write it. I can also write it as negative three is less than X is less than two. Those are the same thing. Just I think this way looks a little more simplified. Okay, so that represents that one this one, or X can also be greater than four. Look at that. See all that? That represents that, that, and that. You'll notice they're all less than or greater than, not equal to because of the open circles. All right, so that is my answer. If your teacher wants it in interval notation, we would say pick a number from negative infinity. Any number from negative infinity to negative three. They both get parentheses because you can't actually be those numbers. They're the boundary, right? Negative infinity always gets a parenthesis, and negative three gets one because of that open circle. Then I have a U for union, meaning this is together with. You can also pick something from negative three, not including negative three, that's why it has a parenthesis, to two, not including two, so it has a parenthesis. And this is also together with, pick any number from four to infinity, both with parentheses. If any of those were um, closed circle or equal to, you would use a bracket instead of a parenthesis. Okay. Those are my answers. Now it's for the fun part, stick around. Why did we set these equal to zero? And why did we do this sign analysis stuff? Why did that work? Why did this weird number line thing work? Well, let me show you. <laughs> if I were being asked to graph this, don't run and hide because we're at graphing. 
it's going to be all right. If I were being asked to graph this problem, y equals x squared minus x minus 12 over x squared plus x minus 6. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail about how to graph this because I actually have a video I'll link in the corner where I graph this exact equation, but I'm going to do it quickly for you here. If I were being asked to graph this, the first thing I would do would be to look for asymptotes and holes. So if I were to do that, I would figure out that I had a vertical asymptote at two. And remember how we recognize that those X plus threes would cancel each other out and that we still needed to pay attention to them. That is because there will be a hole at negative three, not an asymptote, but a hole. So I know there's going to be a hole somewhere around the negative three area. The next thing I would figure out would be to look at my degrees to figure out that I have a horizontal asymptote at one. There is my horizontal asymptote at one. Then I would figure out my x-intercept, which is at four. All right, then applying things I know about asymptotes and about functions, I would figure out that this graph looks something like this. And on this side, it goes like this. And remember that there is a hole at negative three, about there. Okay, that is what this graph looks like. You're like, okay, great. Why do I care? Let me tell you why you care. Do you remember what our original question was? Oh, let me drop my marker. We we're being asked, where is this greater than zero? Well, let's go ahead and look at where we are greater than zero and see if we match up. All right. So we are greater than zero from negative infinity, right? That arrow keeps going to this hole, which is at negative three. Guys, look, there it is. Oh, let me scoot over a little bit. Negative three. And then we're still above zero from negative three to this asymptote, which is at two. See that? We don't actually touch the asymptote, so we don't include two. And then that's not all. We are also greater than zero from, what is that, four all the way to infinity. Okay, do you see how that works? The only spot where we weren't greater than zero is right here and at the asymptote and the hole. All right, is that so cool, you guys? Look at that. So when we did all of this, when we set these equal to zero, what we were actually doing was finding our x-intercept, our hole, and our asymptote. That's what we were doing when we set those equal to zero. Then this whole sign analysis business that we did was figuring out which direction all of these were going. So from negative infinity to three, we were positive. Then we had that hole and then it continued positive. And then from the two to the four, we were negative and then positive again. Guys, is that so cool? We basically graphed it without realizing we graphed it, right? In a bit more simple way. All right, I hope this made sense. And I hope that you will check out some other videos in a playlist I'll link if you need them, okay? Thank you.